This November, something big is happening in Paris. The city will host international negotiations to help keep global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. 2 degrees might not sound like much, but it's an incredibly important number. Science tells us that if we don't keep global temperature rise below 2 degrees, we risk extreme and irreversible climate change. What does that look like? First, turn up the dial on extreme weather. Heat waves get hotter and longer. So do droughts. Storms will be bigger and more destructive. Growing food and getting enough water will become harder and harder. Forests and coral reefs will disappear from parts of the world. Deserts will spread. And many species on land and sea will be wiped out forever. To avoid this fate, over 190 countries, including Australia, have agreed to keep global warming below the two degree threshold. This means we need global carbon pollution to start falling fast. But mid-century, we need to reach net zero. So in Paris, countries will agree on how to accelerate action to bring down carbon pollution after 2020. Each country will set itself a target. The United States, the European Union and China have announced their initial targets. So have 50 other countries and Australia. But targets are a step, but aren't enough on their own. And international agreements, like the one in Paris, don't tell countries what to do. Each country has to put its own policies in place to reach its target. Countries might use tools like carbon taxes or carbon trading or support for renewable energy. Others regulate pollution limits. But international agreements are important. They set the rules of the game and put pressure on countries to live up to their promises. Back in 1992, the world signed the first climate treaty, focusing public, government and business attention on global warming. Five years later, the Kyoto Protocol set targets for rich nations to limit their pollution and supported poorer nations to access clean energy. The results? A wave of renewable energy laws and a Europe-wide limit on carbon pollution. These sowed the seeds of today's clean energy boom. Today, clean electricity investments rival money spent on coal, oil and gas. The next key climate meeting was in Copenhagen in 2009. Many people remember this as a letdown. Yet it had an important success. Developing countries like China also agreed to have pollution reduction targets. This meant 80% of global carbon pollution was covered by targets. Since then, we've seen China become the world's biggest clean energy investor and is shifting away from coal-based electricity. The second biggest clean energy investor is the United States, which is also regulating emissions from cars, trucks and power stations. What was good for the environment has become good for business, thanks to those international agreements and the actions they sparked. But we're still tracking well above that two degree goal. That's why Paris is so important. The rules to be agreed could mean that countries have to regularly make their targets stronger. The agreement can ensure that countries are more accountable for the targets they set. It can also help the world's poorest countries take part in the global clean boom. Over time, this can bring us closer to the two degree goal, but there's no guarantee that Paris will be a success. We all need to keep the pressure up Join us and tell your government you want a safer climate and a clean modern economy. Urge your government to aim higher so that your country does its fair share to keep climate change below two degrees.